Doctor, talk a little bit about uh, people who are up late at night, uh, people that work overnight. D are they at risk for health issues as they get older? Unfortunately, they are, Scott. And as part of our society, people have to work at night. You know, mm -hmm. some industries work 24-7. You know, in my field, nurses, doctors in hospitals have to work during the night. But there is a, a heavy price to it. Be especially from the point of view of Chinese medicine, but also from the point of view of life, everything is timing. And timing affects our physiology, timing affects our well-being. And the body works in certain rhythms. Nature works in rhythm. The most obvious rhythm is a 24-hour rhythm. We have light half of the time and dark half of the time. And it changes with the seasons, of course. Mm -hmm. There's the viability of seasonal medicine, which is very important and often overlooked, you know, different supplements in different seasons. But as I mentioned, the most obvious uh, cycle rhythm is a 24-hour rhythm. The, and within it, there are a lot of variation. For example, steroids, uh, cortisol spikes around 4 a.m. and a little bit again around 3 p.m. and then it goes down during the night. So some hormones are specifically affected by light. And the key one is melatonin. Melatonin is a very small peptide that is excreted from the pineal gland, which is a tiny gland in the midline of the brain. And it affects multiple systems. It's especially important for immune response. And we, we are now finding out for quite a few years already, it has a big effect in cancer. What happens, melatonin usually spikes at night, and it spikes in relationship to darkness. If we darken this room completely, if it was pitch dark, even if we're in the middle of the day, within minutes, your melatonin level will start rising. In fact, people who stay in the dark a lot have very high level of melatonin. So what happens when we're exposed to light at the wrong time, melatonin secretion stops and our levels drop very abruptly, very quickly. If we think at nature, before we had electricity, then very naturally there would be light during the day. People would light some fire or some candles, and then they will, the fire will die out, the candles will die out, and you have dark. And it was very rejuvenating. But these days, with modern lighting and working at night, it's very different. Melatonin is especially suppressed by blue light. And the fluorescent light, you know, artificial lights are very high in blue light. Mm -hmm. Candles, for example, and fire are much more red-orange spectrum. They have much less of the blue light spectrum. That's why they don't suppress melatonin as much. What happened when, what is the importance of melatonin? Melatonin is still a hormone that is being studied. It has a very big rejuvenating effect. The melatonin is very high when we are young, and then it gradually goes down as we age. We know that lower level of melatonin can increase cancer. We know that melatonin has the ability to decrease, for example, estrogen receptors in estrogen-positive cancer, making it less aggressive. We know that melatonin has direct anti-cancer effect. Melatonin can enhance the anti-cancer effect of, 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 of tamoxifen, you know, a hormonal blocking drug used in breast cancer and some other cancer. It can enhance radiation therapy. It can enhance different chemotherapy, usually at higher dosages. So when we are exposed to, to artificial light at the wrong time, we are definitely paying a price. We can supplement some of this by taking melatonin supplementation. Very interesting, a lot of the research on melatonin came from Italy, and they used very high doses of melatonin. So based on this, we recommend 20 milligrams, sometimes 30 milligrams of melatonin, mm -hmm to be taken at night time, about 9 to 10 p.m. And for radiation therapy or for, 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 for therapy with, with tamoxifen and other hormonal therapies, we recommend 10 milligram. But now they are finding that at very minute dosages of 75 microgram, 0 0.075 milligram a day, we are still getting the anti-cancer benefits of melatonin. So we may be moving to a place where we can use much lower dosages of melatonin. What is the advantage is that at high dosage of melatonin, you can sometimes feel drowsy during the day, and you can get some 
changing your dream pattern when you take high doses of melatonin. But melatonin in general is an extremely important hormone. And again, for people who work night shifts, on the day that they are not working, it's important if they can reestablish their rhythms, their cycles. For people who work normal hours, a very important thing, keep your room dark. Don't have any night lights, don't have any, a, a, any electrical stuff that has lights. Keep your room dark. It's a darkness that allows the melatonin to rise and allows the immune enhancing and the repair mechanisms to really function. Can you talk about the people that live uh, you know, far north that at certain times of year only have, have sunlight almost 24 hours a day, at other times of year it's darkness 24 hours a day. What sort of things, how does that affect them? We know that many of them have depression during the winter. And one of the reasons is that there is a relationship between the level of serotonin and the level of, of, of melatonin. So, when, so usually when the melatonin levels goes up during the night, serotonin levels will go up early in the morning and you won't have depression. But when both of them are out of rhythm, you will have too low of melatonin levels during the night and too low of serotonin levels during the day. So this is why light therapy and being outside in the sun on people who are depressed when they live in places where the winter is very harsh and the day are, are short, sometimes what I recommend them is for one week, take a vacation in Hawaii or go to Florida or go to a southern area and get a lot of light exposure. And usually the best timing is around early February. They survived all the way, they made mm -hmm. it through, through January, then they take this one week, 10 days, it completely gives them a lift, and then they come home, it lasts for another week or two, they start going down again, and then it's already middle of March, early April, and everything changes, and they're okay. Mm -hmm. So that's usually the timing where, where I recommend, where they can't handle it anymore. But it's definitely an issue, definitely an issue.